kids how sweet and pure their hearts are. They don't hold hate. They don't know hate. On June 12, 1977, a group of Girl Scouts took a camping trip to a land called Camp Scott in Mies County, Oklahoma, USA. On the first night of the camping trip, at about 7 p.m., a severe storm blew in, forcing everyone in the camping camp to hide inside their tents, hoping that the storm would pass safely. The next day, about 6 a.m., the bodies of three Girl Scouts who were present together on that stormy night were found inside tent number 8, and they were between the ages of 8 to 10 years. The bodies were lying next to the camp, on the edge of the forest. In April, two months before the killing, the camp counselor was holding a training session, which included going out on exploratory tours in the forest. One day the chancellor came back from one of those tours to find her tent upside down and her things thrown, it seems that someone had stolen her food, and inside her empty cake box she found a handwritten message saying, we are on a mission to kill three girls in the first tent. The chancellor did not show much concern about the incident, because the campgrounds were known before for many horror stories, so I considered it a joke, nothing more, nothing less. But two months later, her camp advisor, Carla Wilhelt, confirmed that the letter was not a joke, as she thought. She who found the girls' bodies on June 13, 1977, was on her way to the shower when she discovered the body of Doris Milner, 10, with a towel and rope tied around her neck and she was naked from the waist down. Not far away, the body of 8-year-old Lori Farmer was found, completely naked, and near her was the body of the third victim, 9-year-old Michael Goss. The three victims had black tape over their mouths, and each body was placed in its own sleeping bag. Autopsies and examinations were conducted on the bodies, and it was later found that the girls had been raped and sexually assaulted, but each of them was killed in a different way. Doris was strangled to death. And Michelle and Lori were beaten to death. It appears that the crime took place inside the tent during the storm and then the killer moved their bodies outside about 100 yards away. Searches for the killer began everywhere, and the police began collecting evidence, starting from the tent in which a wooden board and towels were found, and the killer tried to wipe his fingerprints and blood inside. There was a red flashlight inside of which was a piece of paper cut from a newspaper. A nylon rope and a roll of electrical tape were also found, and a number of pairs of eyeglasses were also found near the bodies. So are the footprints of an adult shoe. The police dogs managed to smell and follow the killer's scent around the camping area, and it turned out that the killer had passed by the chancellor's tent on his way to the girl's tent. The dogs were able to track the scent down to a cave near the camp area. Inside the cave they found a newspaper and it was found that the paper clip inside the flashlight was cut from it, and inside the cave were also found two pictures of two women, they later discovered that the objects belonged to Jane Leroy Hart, who became the first and main suspect in the case. Hart had been at large for four years since 1973 after escaping from the Mays County Jail, and had been convicted of four counts of first-degree burglary, in addition to the kidnapping and rape of two pregnant women, and he kidnapped them after they left a bar and took them into the woods where he assaulted them and then handcuffed them and closed their mouths with duct tape and left them to die in the forest, but one of the two women managed to untie her and then helped her companion survive. The two women described the assailant as being indigenous, Native American, and that he was not normal during the rape and was making strange sounds. On April 6, 1978, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation agents broke into a home in a rural area near Bunch County and arrested 34-year-old criminal Jane. Upon his arrest, Hart was wearing women's glasses, and during his trial he was charged with murder and sexual assault of the three victims. But the jury found him not guilty he was acquitted of the case for lack of evidence. In fact, there were several things that condemn Hart, as he has a criminal record and a history of rape, as well as that he grew up in a house not far from the scout camp, but these matters were not up to the level of conclusive evidence, his lawyer argued that the traces of blood and fingerprints that were found at the crime scene, it did not belong to Hart, and the shoe tracks inside the tent were different from the size of Hart's shoes. 
The lawyer also claimed that the semen found on the victims could not be heart because the latter had had a vasectomy, but the police deny this point. It was also rallied during the trial that the judicial proceedings and the accusations against Hart were on racial grounds. The defense was so successful in arousing sympathy for Hart that the families of the victims had to enter the court under heavy guard for fear of being attacked by the angry crowd. Despite Hart's acquittal, he returned to prison again to complete his sentence for his previous crimes, as well as for his previous escape from prison and the total sentences issued against him amounted to 308 years. Two months into his imprisonment, while doing exercises in the prison yard, Hart suddenly fell dead of a heart attack on June 4, 1979. In 1989, with the development of DNA analyzes and techniques, a matching test was performed with the DNA found on the bodies of the victims, and three of the five tests were confirmed using Hart's acid. But the result was not conclusive, so the test was repeated in 2008, but the result was not be decisive also to present the sample used in the test. There is a theory that says that Jin did not commit the crime himself, but had a partner, and perhaps an accomplice, and the reason is due to the footprints of the shoes, and the hair inside the tent, which the investigators found while examining the tent. Nevertheless, the case is still open despite its classification as a cold case, meaning that there are no developments or new investigations regarding it. After this incident, the camp, which opened in 1928, was closed, and the company that ran the camp was sued for negligence, as how three girls were killed inside a tent and no one in the camp felt that. The issue remains unresolved to this day.